Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome. Uh, thank you for, very much for uh, joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, we are very pleased to uh, welcome uh, uh, Mrs. Meherzia Al Abidi. Uh, she's a member of the parliament in Tunisia and also a member of the executive committee of the uh, Nahda uh, party. Um, almost exactly six years ago, we had we witnessed revolutions or uprisings, whatever you want to call them, in uh, five uh, Arab countries um, almost exactly six years ago. Uh, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Yemen, and Syria. And fortunately, uh, it's not going very well in the other Arab countries, as we know, in Libya, in Egypt, in Syria, and Yemen. They are facing a lot of problems, a lot of challenges, including violence. Uh, and in Egypt, a coup, a military coup to bring back the old regime. Uh, but uh, Tunisia remains uh, steadfast on the path to building a democracy, uh, a successful democracy in Tunisia. It has not been easy. Certainly has been a lot of challenges and a lot of uh, uh, problems and difficulties along the road, but uh, we are very happy and excited that Tunisia uh, remains uh, on the path to democracy. Uh, we wanted uh, to uh, find out why, you know, what, what made the difference in Tunisia, why, what helped and made Tunisia successful. Uh, I think this is one of the important questions that we wanted to learn from uh, and discuss today with uh, Mrs. Labidi, and also what can other countries uh, learn from the model, from the experience of Tunisia. We know that democratic transitions are difficult and challenging and uh, take time, and we have to be patient, but also um, that uh, we can learn from the experience of other countries. And Tunisia certainly uh, is leading the way and I think personally that it will be inevitable in the other countries as well. So it really helps to have a good model or a model that shows uh, not only that it's possible, but it shows that how it can be done uh, in the region, in the Arab world. So we are very happy and very excited uh, to welcome Mrs. Labidi. She will speak for about 20 minutes and then we will open it for uh, discussions and Q&A. I think you have all seen the biography of uh, Mrs. Labidi. She's been very active in interfaith dialogue before the revolution. Uh, she lived in Paris for a long time, since uh, 1991 or 92, something like that, when, uh, no. when Ben Ali came to power. <laughs> 86, so oh, since 86. I, I <laughs> so she was very active in interfaith, uh, several interfaith organizations and, and the interfaith community. Um, and after the revolution, of course, she became involved in the uh, transition to democracy. She was the vice president of the National Constituent Assembly, she was elected vice president in uh, 2011, uh, which you know, as you know, is uh, the body that uh, was in charge of writing the constitution uh, in Tunisia. And after that, uh, she, uh, she is a member of parliament, elected member of parliament, and uh, as I said, also a member of the executive committee of the Nahda, uh, the Islamic party in Tunisia, Islamic Democratic Party in Tunisia, which I think is uh, a good model also for merging uh, Islam and democracy, or is trying to be a good model, let's put it uh, that way, for merging Islamic and demo Islam and democracy. So. Uh, Mrs. Labidi, thank you very much for joining us and uh, welcome. Please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for being here today to listen to me, and I hope that we'll have very good discussion. Indeed, the uh, discussion is the favorite sport in Tunisia. We've been discussing. <laughs> so let me start by greeting you with the Tunisian dialect, Aslama, <laughs> for everybody. Um, my name is Mahrizia, and I, am, I belong to this generation born 
uh, in, let's say, just after the, uh, the independence of Tunisia. I benefited in Tunisia, in the modern Tunisia, the modern state founded by Bourguiba, from education, public education, from the status, very advanced status of women. And I think with Radwan, with uh, um, also uh, <laughs> Monji and many person here present from Tunisia, we belong to that generation that really hope, hoped or in better Tunisia. In Tunisia, where it was possible to um, not only to develop oneself, to uh, socially, economically, but we have a dream of Tunisia, modern Tunisia and democratic Tunisia. Certainly, Tunisia grew modern and we have many, um, let's say, on the level of education, women's rights, health system. Uh, we were certainly, since 1956, since the independence, a modern state. Yet, the demand of democracy, of pluralism, and of peaceful alternation to power, respect of human rights, uh, was lacking in this modern Tunisia. And many men and women from Tunisia asked for more democratization, I think since the 70s. And I'm proud to say that one of the first, the first voices was a lady's vo voice, Radia al-Haddad, the founder of the Tunisian uh, Women uh, Union. She declared in 72 to Bourguiba. She respected him. She fought with him for the independence of Tunisia. But in the parliament, the parliament in which we voted the second Tunisian constitution in 2014, three, two years ago, or three years ago, she told him, modernity is not enough for us. We want modernity and we want democracy in this country. We deserve it. We are worthy it as Tunisian. Well, he was modern, but he was not as, he was not as democratic as that and she was uh, expelled from the parliament. Some 30 years after, or more, we came to this, the same parliament after the revolution in 2011. 40 years, yes, 40 years after, with the same dream and the same claim. It's high time that Tunisia become more democratic for all Tunisians, that human rights shall meet Islamic values, that Tunisian people shall reconcile with their history, with their present, with their traditions, with their modernity, well, the, the dream was big. I do not doubt, I have no doubt, and I was among the, the MPs in the Constituent Assembly in November 2011, when we started transforming the dream into reality. So I have no doubt that all my colleagues, that the civil society in Tunisia, that all, let's say, political families, want this democracy, yet we are coming, we were coming at that time and still we are coming from a period of despotism, a period of lack of liberty of expression, liberty of organizing, liberty of meeting. There was no space for free dialogue between us. So 
we came to this, let's say, building, the moment of building the, this social contract, the constitution, with the same dream, but with different vision of Tunisia. Some of us dream of democratic Tunisia, but it must look more Muslim than secularist. Some others say, no, Tunisia must be secularist, more secularist than Islamic. Some think that, okay, but do we need democracy? Maybe we need stability and security more than democracy. So this different vision, we had to put them together to be able to have this common, this shared social contract that is the Constitution. And it was not easy. It was not easy. We have gone through many difficulties. Our country experienced political and ideological bipolarization. We had people in the street demonstrating for more Islam and people demonstrating for more secularism. We had people in the street demonstrating for more respect of identity and people demonstrating, stop with identity. We need political programs. We have very tough discussion within the Constituent Assembly on media, but we did it. We arrived to transcend these difficulties, even political assassination. We suffered from two political assassinations, then terrorist act, uh, attacks on our security force. Well, how to put all these challenges together and yet keep on believing in our dream? I think we succeeded in spite of all these difficulties and also the need to answer the expectation of our youth of inner regions like Gasrin, Sidi Bouzid, who are expecting this revolution to bring them prosperity and development. So we succeeded to transcend all these difficulties due to historical factors, demographic factors, political factors, and which I will briefly mention. The historical factor. Tunisia is historically a united country. On the level of ethnicity, on the level of religion, the majority of Tunisians are Sunni Maliki. We have no fracture, line of fracture on the sectarian level or religious level. Yes, of course, that we have a very old and very Tunisian Jewish community in Jerba, in Gabes, in Tunis, in Nabal. But uh, you, you may see Tunisian or listen to Tunisian quarreling about many things. But when it comes to their Jewish co-citizens, oh, they are our co-citizens. We, there is no problem with their presence that we share the city, the, the country, we share the, uh, the history, we share also the help. Uh, so this factor of unity on the level of religion, language, ethnicity, was one factor of unity. The other factor is coming from the modern state built by Bourguiba. He gave importance to education. So in Tunisia, the average of educated people is high, considering uh, com compared to other countries. And since we have educated people, we may have conflicts, and we had. We may have conflicts about the projects, the priorities, etc., and we did. We may discuss, and as I told you, this is our national sport. Everybody is discussing, saying that he is right, she is right, etc., but when it comes to confrontation, to violence, we have the capacity to refrain, to stop. I do not say that there is one group who is better than the other, 
both those who re claim themselves more closer to Islamic tradition or to secularist tradition, communist, liberal, uh, conservative, uh, trade unionist, and the trade union is very important in Tunisia, all these groups have this capacity to refrain in front of violence. I think this is very important. This is a key character in Tunisian society is that Tunisian character uh, loathe and reject bloodshed. This was very important. This is why when we were struck by uh, terrorist attacks, in spite of our differences, we said we are in a united against terrorism. We will never let violence be the winner in Tunisia. And the other factor is that we have a strong civil society in Tunisia. This civil society has a history. For example, the trade union, Tunisian UGTT, Union Générale des Travailleurs Tunisiens, is the first trade union in the Arab world. And uh, maybe it seems bizarre, but it was founded by a real communist uh, activist and one of the sheikh of Zaytuna, Sheikh Fadl bin Ashur, and Muhammad Ali al-Hami, and Farhat Hashad later on. So this was... So they established it together? Yes, they established the trade union together in the um, early uh, 20s, and then it evolved. So this is also Tunisia. We have the first League of Human Rights, one of the first League of Human Rights in the Arab world. We have women organization who are strong. We have lawyers organization. The lawyers organization was one of the organizations that often said no to Ben Ali in his dictatorship. And this civil society, when the transition came to a crisis, a very sharp crisis in July, August, September and October 2013, the civil society at a moment, a very crucial moment, said to political parties, we are not going to be part of the conflict. We are going to be mediators. And they were mediators. And this is how the quartet got the Nobel Prize. And this is also one of the factors of success of Tunisian democracy. And we politicians, we are often criticized of, let's say, privileging the interest of political parties on that of the nation. And I shall recognize that in Tunisia, we had political leaders, notably two political leaders, in this period of transition, very sensitive period of transition, who have chosen together to give the priority to Tunisia, not to their political party. This is why I want to pay tribute here to the president of Republic, Mr. Beji Qaid Sebsi, elected in 2014. He was the leader of the opposition from 2012 to 2013. After being the first, one of the first prime minister who led the country to the election uh, in uh, the election of the Constituent Assembly, he had a capacity of mobilizing many small political parties around him. He founded a political party and called it NIDA. And he had the capacity to challenge the governing Nahda. I belong to Nahda. I am a member from Nahda. Yet, at the apex of the crisis after political assassination in 2013, when even the parliament was split, he was capable of saying on media, is it not time to dialogue now? Is it not time to sit together? So he launched this invitation, and the invitation was accepted by Rashid Ghanoushi, the president of the Nahda, and the leader of the, at that moment of the governing coalition. Yesterday, I used this image, very familiar in Arab world, 
and in Arab language, I tried to translate it in English, I, I said that observers, and many Tunisians, were expecting and waiting these two leaders to wage the mother of all the battles. Who is going to exclude the other? And they surprised us. They announced to us, it was in August 2013, the mother of reconciliations. They had the audace and the courage to say, OK, Tunisia is for all of us. We cannot exclude the one or the other. We have differences, yes. We have maybe different vision. Why not to sit together and discuss about a common vision of Tunisia? This, uh, this is how the national dialogue was born in Tunisia, October 2013. And it was mediated, monitored by the four uh, civil society organization, the trade union, lawyers, bar, uh, the bar, and uh, human league, and uh, the bosses uh, also uh, um, syndica or a union, union business, the businessmen uh, and women a union, Utica. So I think that the visionary leadership has contributed to this uh, success and allowed us to discuss and to vote the constitution in a very pluralistic and serene, more or less serene atmosphere. We were able to create, even we were creative, we created a, a commission in the Constituent Assembly and it was an informal commission. We called it the Consensus Commission. And while voting the article of the Constitution, each time we had a problem, each time the, the vote cannot be major, majority because we need to the two-thirds of the assembly, we brought the issue in front of the consensus um, committee. And what was important with this com consensus committee is that it worked according to the principle what is good, not what is just. Uh, because the representative of different political parties within the parliament was not chosen on the rule of proportionality. But even the political party who has only one representative was also in this consensus committee. This is how we succeeded to vote a shared social contract, which is, which is our constitution. And what is really very important, now when you ask women organization or youth organization, uh, our political party, NIDA, uh, uh, sorry, NAHDA, <laughs> NAHDA, <laughs> or NIDA, or uh, the uh, public, Jabha uh, Shabiya, Popular Front from, uh, or uh, the Congress, any political party or any group, you ask, so the, what do you think of the Constitution? Be sure that he or she will answer, oh, the, the Constitution is good, because we have contributed to it. Because we have pushed to, for example, vote parity, to vote an article for youth, to for an article for disabled person, an article for refugees, etc. So, the ownership of the Constitution is shared between Tunisia. This is also very important for the success of the model. Well, and we succeeded to have an uh, election in 2014, uh, and also a government of coalition, yet now we came, we are in a second transition. In the second transition, we still have many difficulties. The main difficulty is how to make, how to achieve an economic transition. 
A democracy that cannot deliver prosperity, jobs for the, th the, th the 31% youth unemployed, infrastructure for the isolated in the regions, better income for the poor family, a democracy that cannot have a rate of growth more than two or three is not percent is not a viable or sustainable democracy. So this is our main challenge here. And here I am really speaking in Washington DC in front of you, I shall say honestly that if we if Tunisia succeeds its economic transition, and we are striving to do so, that means that democracy all over the world is the winner, not only Tunisia. We are firmly decided to do it. In spite of all hardships and difficulties, we have succeeded to have a conference of investment which was real success last November. We have promises. We are developing our capacity to achieve, to execute these promises. Yet, we still need the solidarity and the support of international community for this new, young uh, uh, democracy. Second a challenge is security. We faced and we resisted to terrorism when it attacked Tunisian society. Tunisian security force, Tunisian visitors and guests in Hamamat and Bardo. Indeed, when it attacked our model of society, we, I think we've done what we have to do as population, as civil society, as government, as MPs, to tell terrorists you are not going to destroy our model of society. We are going to repel you, to reject you. Yet, the threat of terrorism is an international threat. And we are in an unstable region. Next door, Libya is also a territory for some very violent groups. Algeria is striving and helping us again to face terrorism, and thanks God that we have Algeria as neighbor. I really, I want to pay tribute to our neighbor, Algeria. The community, the international community helped us by equipment, training, etc., to face terrorism, yet there is an injury in Tunisia. The terrorist networks succeeded in attracting considerable number of our youth. So we have to understand why this happened. What are the socioeconomic reasons? And we are working now to develop on the level of the state, the, the presidency of the republic, and the level of the government. We are developing a comprehensive strategy to face, to face terrorism, to understand this phenomenon to prevent it and to heal and to remedy its consequences on the society, on youth, and on the image of our country. Well, we are firmly decided also to be the winner in this battle against terrorism. And I think that in a way we are being successful. How much time? Okay, so I will finish with this example, then I'm open to all your questions. Do you remember last March, uh, March in two, 2016, last year, on the 7th of March, a group of terrorists from Libya entered through Libyan borders to the city of Bengerdan, a city whose inhabitants has not yet been delivered the promises of democracy. No infrastructure, no job, 
still waiting for development, etc. Yet, they have benefited from liberty, democracy, possibility to be citizen, to express themselves, and for the sake of the liberty and democracy, they faced terrorists. And they helped our security force. And they helped our army to chase terrorists out of the city. It was really a crazy uh, situation. They were throwing stones to terrorists. Yes, throwing stones to them. Indeed, they sent to us as politicians, but to the world, that maybe a nascent democracy an unfinished, ungrowing democracy, in any case, is better than chaos and than violence. They have sent a message to youth all over the Arab world, Arab Muslim world, that the path starts here. When we are capable of transcending our difficulties, differences, quarrels, to give priority to the nation, to the country, to Tunisia, everything is possible. Politicians succeeded in this test. Civil society succeeded in this test. Tunisian citizens succeeded in this test. So after that, economic development and transition, being winner on terrorism, guaranteeing stability, and security, we will be able to do all this since, or as, sorry, as far as we stay together. This is why now, after maybe a period of doubt and expectation and waiting, we have voted two days or three days ago the law that will allow us to have local elections to bring, uh, let's say, uh, participatory process, democratic participatory proce process from a central and national level to local level. This is, for me, the real revolution because it will answer the expectation, especially of youth and women and of inner regions waiting for this local election. And it will lead us we will make one more or even many more steps on the path of building Tunisian democracy. Tunisian democracy is still fragile. But we Tunisians, whether we belong to that party or this, where we are have uh, an ideological ideal or not, whether we are young or less young, we still have this dream. We still have this dream. We want to build a democracy where diversity is respected, human rights are respected, where the alternation to power is not done through coup d'etat, but through elections. We insist, yes. And to build a state, democratic republic, based on citizenship, supremacy of the law and sovereignty of the people and to reconcile once and for all Islam, democracy, modernity. Maybe Tunisia is the right place where to meet and believe me, it is. You are all invited to visit us. Merci.